Hello, my friends. This is Paul, and this is my January wrap-up of January 2023. The things I read, what January felt like, what I did during January, and my plans for February. So, in January of 2023, I started to get back into BookTube and creating reviews for each book. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be because I found out a, a good system for myself. Record in the morning before work and edit the video before work and then upload it and put the information out while uh, on my break at work. So it really made it a lot more easy for me because in the past I tried to do the whole batch filming thing on the weekend and I just didn't care for it. I really like having my weekends completely free of having to edit videos or film videos. And I like to spend most of my time on the weekend actually reading. So when I do it before work, it feels like something that it's just I'm supposed to do. So I'm really enjoying that aspect of it and getting back into it. Uh, I think the videos are getting better as I'm doing them. I figure the more reps, the more videos I put out, the better I'll become. I'd like to be a little bit more free flowing and loose and funny. Uh, right now they're pretty serious. Uh, and I try not to be super serious because maybe that might be my natural inclination. So I, I need to be a little bit less serious about it. And I read a lot. I was very happy with my reading. I started my my goal for this year of not using any media other than reading uh, a, a few podcasts and then a few things during my break at work. So no television and movies at home here and I still have no home internet. And that has really opened up time for me to read a lot uh, during the week and especially on the weekend. So my schedule now is I try to wake up at five o'clock and go to the gym while going at the gym and also at the gym. And on the way home, I try to listen to an audiobook. And then when I get home, I eat breakfast, you know, I get ready for work. And then I'll either film a video or edit a video. And if I don't have a video to film or a video to edit, I'll read before I go to work. Go to work for uh, eight hours or so. Uh, during my break, I upload the videos and respond to comments and work on the thumbnails. And then when I come home, I cook dinner and then I read for the rest of the night until I go to bed around 9 o'clock. So right now that is my weekday schedule. On the weekends, I like to try to uh, visit my parents if I can, but if not, I get a lot more reading time in. And then of course I have other responsibilities as well. That take up time, but I'm really happy with the amount of reading that I did in January. I read seven novels, seven novels. I read The Chain by Adrian McKinty, and I enjoyed that. It's very suspenseful, though the second half was a little weird. Way different than the first half. And then I read Blood Mirror by Brent Weeks, which was great, except for the parts with Kip and uh, Tissus. So that was weird, that was awkward, and that was not fun, that was stupid. <laughs> Uh, Upgrade by Blake Crouch, um, a really forgettable book, uh, wasn't horrible but very forgettable. Uh, the World We Make by N.K. Jemisin, I'm still disappointed it turned into a duology and not a trilogy. I mean she has good excuses. I also realized that I, the big bad being one dimensional was kind of not the greatest choice. I think it would have been cooler if we would have had maybe a rival city that had shades of gray in it or something. But the conflict just wasn't that great. Um, though the book was good. Uh, the Kaiju Preservation, great fluff book, loved it. Speaking of fluff books, um, Legends and Lattes by uh, Travis Baldry, total fluff, loved it, thought it was great. Um, the Half-Life of Valerie Kay by Natasha Poli, 
fantastic horse, historical fiction about a time and era and setting that I didn't know a whole lot about. So I enjoyed that. Um, learning about Soviet era Russia and nuclear issues and the effects of radiation, very interesting. So those are all of the novels I read. For nonfiction, I listened to three and read one. I listened to Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, uh, Boys and Sex by Peggy Ornston, Alice of the Heart by Brene Brown, and then I read Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, Cast and Boys and Sex were phenomenal, very good. I gave them both five stars. The two things that I gave five stars to this this uh, month. Um, Alice of the Heart was okay. Yeah, and then Nonviolent Communication was great for the first half, awful for the second. <laughs> I read three short fiction magazines, uh, eleven stories in total. Um, a couple from Dark Mag, a couple of issues from Dark Magazine, three issues from Nightmare. And then there was a Legends and Latte short story too. And there was a couple on there that I liked that I reviewed. So check those out. Um, I read middle grade books from Stuart, Stuart Gibbs, Once Upon a Tim and Labyrinth of Doom. And those were great because I needed those during a time when I wasn't feeling well. And they just really hit the spot. And they were a lot of fun. Um, I really rate books based off of my enjoyment of them. Rarely do I write a book based off of the difficulty or the uniqueness of it. It's almost always for the enjoyment. But then I read um, six novellas in January, High Times in the Low Parliament by Kelly Robson, which was uh, written very well with cool characters, but a very uh, not so interesting conflict. And I think she could have done a lot better with that. Um, Amir Menden by Alex E. Haro. I am a little bit over the whole fractured story tale thing at the moment. So I think that is kind of outplayed. I'll probably keep reading that series though if she keeps writing it. <laughs> um, Emily Tesh, I read her two novellas. Uh, Silver in the Woods and Drowned Country. They were very good. Uh, I listened to the audiobook as well, and that was during a time when I wasn't feeling well, and, that, and those really helped. Um, a Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. You know, Dex and Moscap are fantastic, and their conversations are great. I just like their deep conversations. Even Though I Knew the End was probably my favorite novella by C.L. Polk. It was an urban fantasy and a mystery with a lot of twists. And I loved, I loved going into that one blind. And then I read a few graphic novels, uh, just three. And that was uh, Sadako at the End of the World, um, A Man and His Cat, and then I read Thirsty Mermaids by Cat Leigh. Um, Amanda and his cat, the first volume was really good. Uh, Thirsty Mermaids was very good as well. Thirsty Mermaids got my highest rating of any of the fiction items that I read. It was a four and a half stars. Really enjoyed that. Once again, that came at a good time when I wasn't feeling well. So th those are all the things I read in January. A fantastic January. A lot of short books other than uh, The Blood Mirror by Brent Leakes. Um, everything else was less than less than 400 pages I believe can't quite remember the Half-Life of Valerie Kay how many pages that was but the Blood Mirror was at least five or 600 maybe 700 pages so I think for February I want to read some more short fiction um, I am woefully behind on short fiction especially what I had last year. Uh, so I have the physical copy of Fantasy and Science Fiction, the January and February issue of this year. So that is what I'm going to be focusing on uh, this week, probably. I have the December issue of Clark's World. And I now get 
both Clark's World, uh, Fantasy and Science Fiction, and Asimov's in physical form. And honestly, the Clark's World one is just phenomenally amazing. Like, the art is great on these. Every time I go to a Worldcon and I see, and I see Neil Clark there, and I see him selling all these books, I'm like, man, why am I not buying the physical copies? Because honestly, uh, getting a subscription for this is $10. And the ebook for the ebook one is three, so I'm only paying seven dollars more for this beautiful copy that I can then give to my public libraries to circulate because no one's putting Clark's World in the library system, so now people can find Clark's World in the library system. Um, I, I do want to read Africa Risen, which is an uh, anthology or a collection of um, short, short fiction. Edited by Shane, Cherie, I'm sorry, Cherie Renee Thomas. Um, I have one middle grade book here. It is called Sir Callie and the Champions of Helston, which is a middle grade fantasy, light fantasy, uh, with a non binary character. I wanted to read that. And then I have a few uh, graphic things. We have Kaiju number five, <laughs> Kaiju number eight, volume five. We have uh, So I'm a Spider, or Now I'm a Spider, So What, or something like that. The, the cover is covered up. Um, it is So I'm a Spider, So What. And um, a kid at the library returned this one, and he liked it a lot, so I, I pearled it. It's Hana Chan and the Shape of the World uh, by Rotaro uh, Ayuda. I probably butchered that. But he said it was really good, and I want to read it now. And then I want to read the second volume of Blue Flag from Kato. And I really liked volume one. So those four things are the graphics that I have borrowed from the library. Um, my one nonfiction book that I have borrowed is Rob Bell, How to Be Here. And it's very short, so I should be able to read that quickly. Now for the novels. I'm, I'm not reading as many novels but the the ones that i am reading are a little bit thicker so we have the last book in brent weeks series um the lightbringer series this one is called the burning white and this one i believe is close to 900 pages so that one's going to take a while also i have a long book here babel by rf quang and I'm looking forward to that. I do think that R.F. Quang and Babel will win the Hugo Award uh, this coming year just because a lot of people love this book and also her influence in the Chinese uh, market as well. I, I think she's a shoe in to win this year. And then I have a book that I bought for the library, Observer, from Robert Lanza and Nancy Kress. I just thought this sounded very interesting with the ideas of looking into the world. And um, it uh, should be challenging. I haven't read a really challenging book in a while. And if I'm able to read all of that, um, we have The Bruising of Quilla by Nassim um, Jamnia. This is actually my book. And I want to read more short fiction. So hopefully I'm able to read all these things in February. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, things are going well. I um, lost three pounds in January, so I'm hoping to continue that trend into February. And I hope to just do really well at work, read a lot of books at home, um, love the people that I love, and have a good time and live life. I love to read, and uh, if I'm able to read a lot, that is my happy place. Okay. That's it for me for January. I'll see you all in my next review. If you uh, enjoyed this wrap up of the month, let me know in the comments below. Oh yeah, visit your local library. All of these things I got at my local library. Your local library wants you to use your items. The local library gets funding based off of the items that you borrow from them. The more items you borrow, the more funding they get the more items they can buy. Thanks for watching.